Hi everybody, we're going to be doing some English. I hope you're ready to get your plan uh, going because planning is arguably one of the most important or arguably the most important stage of our writing. Uh, and of course, we're carrying on with our balanced argument. So we're going to be planning it. Today. So what is a balanced argument? A balanced argument gives equal emphasis to both sides of an argument. We are quite neutral in this argument. We're not displaying our opinions. It's not about us. We are just showing what some people think. We're trying to be balanced. We're trying to give different points of view. We're just trying to stick to facts and what people, maybe what people think and try and leave ourselves out of it. So we're going to give information for and against. Now, a balanced argument needs certain things. So these are our features. If you've done your reading today, we call them organi organizational features or organizational devices. Uh, it's how we structure our writing. So there's going to be an introduction. There's going to be an argument for paragraph, an argument against paragraph, and a conclusion. Some of you might have more than one argument for paragraph but you're going to have the same amount of arguments against paragraphs. Generalizers. This is what I was saying uh, previously about we're trying to keep ourselves out of the picture. We're not talking about our opinions. We might use phrases like many people think, some people believe. Sometimes it's really good to put in experts say. We're trying to keep uh, ourselves out of it. It could be argued that... On one hand, some people think this, but on the other hand, other people think that. It's not about I, it's not about we. We're in the third person here. Openers, on one hand, furthermore, however, uh, however, sorry. Uh, some people believe is a good way to start. Present tense. So we're talking about now what's happening now because that's what we're arguing it's not going to be some people believed or some people used to think that this we're just keeping in the present tense uh, subordinating conjunctions we're going to be using some of these remember you should have in your grammar work a whole list you might have some contrasting conjunctions uh, you might have some uh, what else have we done we had our what's the word also begins with S. No, it doesn't. It begins with C. Comparative conjunctions when you're comparing things. Uh, try and use some of those. In order to be able to do this, we must do this. Some people think this, whereas other people think this. We might want to come back to this stage. Remember how to structure paragraphs. We did this, I believe, last week. So this is within our paragraph. Our topic sentence would introduce what the paragraph is about. Our supporting sentences add the meat to that paragraph. It's where we're going to add our details about that starting topic sentence. Now that topic sentence might be the point that you want to make. It might be your overarching point that you want to make. So what I mean by that is, if we're talking about the overarching, we might just... So give a general reason for being for and then support it with more of our points. Whereas some people might take each of their points and have them as a topic sentence and support them in other ways by adding a bit more detail. It's up to you. The more conventional way to do it would just be have a for paragraph and then against. And then our ending sentence, which sort of closes that paragraph. It lets the reader know that paragraph's closed uh, and then we're going to be starting something else mini conclusion so what I'm going to show you is some examples of uh, a four paragraph and against paragraph an introduction and a conclusion and this is just so you can refer back to it and you might uh, you might take some ideas actually a teacher told me I was talking to a teacher today and they was telling me about something called a magpie book now this is a little book that they have and they keep it with them for uh, 
all of their lessons in their school, but actually you could start one now. And this could be, you might be reading a book and you are just writing things in your magpie book, things that you want to borrow, things that you particularly like. It sounded really good. It could be a word. It could be a phrase. It could be a whole sentence. It could be a paragraph. Probably, probably steer away from that, but it could be a sentence, something that you really like that stood out that you want to use. Now, this can come in they keep it with them the whole time so it could come at any time they might have an idea they might pop it in there you might see something in this uh introduction that i'm going to show you that you could pop in your magpie book and you can use it i wouldn't copy all of it but it might be a word it might be a spelling it might be an idea it might be you just like the way that sentence sounds and you might want to use it sometime you might not know why you want to use it but it sounded good and you wanna you wanna learn how to do that. So take that, take some words, take some techniques, write them down so you can use them. So here we have an example. I digress there. Presents for birthday says should wrapping paper be banned? Presents for birthdays and Christmas often come wrapped in paper. General statement about what we're talking. So it's a little taster. This is a tradition which has taken place for centuries in countries all over the world and is seen as a normal part of present giving. We've just made a statement, backed it up. I said it's a tradition, it happens all over the world, lots of people do it. Uh, however, now we're dropping the bombshell here. However, should it be banned? Now we're posing that question in their mind, we're doing that right at the end. You might say, like, uh, wrapping paper has been an essential part of Christmas for many years. Regularly, uh, children or, or families wrap presents up and leave them under the tree. Should this tradition continue? Something along those lines. Now, we've got three sentences here. You might just have two. Uh, you get the general idea here. We'll pose the question last, but we'll give a little background information. So, our arguments for wrapping paper can seem to be wasteful and unnecessary. First of all, this is for it being banned, not for using wrapping paper. First of all, wrapping paper is usually only used once and then thrown away. Consequently, Particularly at Christmas time, there is a huge amount of waste for local councils to sort. Although it could be argued that wrapping paper could be recycled, it is actually more likely that the paper will end up in landfill due to it being difficult to process. Furthermore, there are plenty of alternatives to wrapping paper, such as, such as more easily recycled brown paper or even decorative fabric. The fact is, wrapping paper is not a necessity in our lives. So there, let's see here, we've introduced it in our topic sentence here. We're talking about it being wasteful. Uh, we're talking about it being thrown away, and the consequence of that is that there's huge amounts of wastes. You might, and we've got this, although, you might say that it can be recycled, but actually I'm going to counter that point by saying it's really difficult. I'm going to give a few more. And I've ended here a nice short sentence. The fact is, wrapping paper is not a necessity. I'm cementing that point that it is, it is unnecessary, it's needless. Hopefully you've taken some things from that. So the next one, wrapping paper should be banned. Arguments against not. On the other hand, remember this flowed from the last uh, sentence. The last paragraph, sorry. There are many who believe that wrapping paper is a really important part of giving gifts. Firstly, using wrapping paper adds to the excitement of receiving gifts. People liking to guess what might be inside by looking at the size, weight and shape of what they have been given. I know this is particularly true in our household uh, because I've got a really long, thin, square box. <laughs> I knew what it was exactly. I was shaking it around. It was in fact a golf club. But I knew that. That was part of it. 
I knew that and I could I could see that. But it was part of it, guessing the shapes. You got all sorts of different shapes, little square ones, big long ones. Some people think it's part of it. Secondly, the experience of opening the presents is an event itself. We know that people, especially children, relish the opportunity to rip wrapping paper off presents, eager to find out what's inside. And I know that this is true. Uh, this is just from my Christmas. Uh, we, my partner has a niece who's a really young baby. And she was born, I don't know, just over a year, a year and a bit. Now she's too young to really understand what's sort of going on. So what uh, her sister asked it's so my partner's sister, she asked, can we just wrap up some nappies? Because actually, the baby didn't know uh, what the present was about. They just wanted to unwrap it. She really liked unwrapping the paper. So a lot of people think, actually, it's not the present. It's, it's the act of unwrapping it that makes it important. Thirdly, sorry, that was a complete side note. Thirdly, wrapping an object makes it seem special, which in turn makes the recipient, so the person that receives it, feel special. An ordinary object can become ordinary simply with paper. Clearly, wrapping paper is an intrinsic part of the ceremony. So that intrinsic means it's really, 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 really important. It's an intrinsic part of the ceremony of giving and receiving presents. Many have it fond memories of unwrapping gifts. So now we've got that sentence. It's slightly longer this time, but we're saying clearly. Like it's obvious we're telling the reader. So in our conclusion, using a form of wrap to conceal presence should continue as it, as it is obviously a meaningful and exciting part of gift giving and receiving process. However, there are many alternatives to mass-produced, environmentally unfriendly wrapping paper which work just as well and it will not result in destroying the planet Earth. So here we've said, we've sort of summed up what we're saying, we've given an argument for each. So we're saying it should continue because it gives a meaningful one. However, there might need to be a compromise here because there are better alternatives than the unfriendly ones. So... I'm going to give you this example as a PDF for you to look at, for you to analyse. Here we can see our introduction, our argument for, our argument against, and our conclusion. And you can go through that if you want to and pick out some bits, put it in your Magpie book. Uh, get a general feel of how the, uh, what a good one looks like. But your task for today... I'm going to upload this as a PDF. And your task is going to be go through and plot your reasons for and your reasons against. And then a little closing statement. You may also want to make notes on your introduction. Now this isn't this isn't the final piece. I would use the planning program. So for example, uh, reasons for you should have lots of reasons for reasons sh wrapping paper should be banned I agree with that so this is for is agree disagree disagree so you agree that it should be banned because it's bad for environment bad for the environment but actually you might come up with a better word for bad you might have harmful harmful for the environment evidence uh, so you may want to conduct a little bit of research it's up to you normally we would when we were in school bad for the environment or it's harmful and what is that so it goes to landfill Uh, you might see some pictures somewhere. It might be, oh, uh, goes to landfill, it gets washed up on foreign countries. It's 
washed up on, on beaches and foreign countries. Uh, you might talk about animals. You might think uh, wrapping presents is, you might think it should be banned because of uh, maybe the materials because it's shiny plastic. Shiny plastic is impossible to, some are really hard to recycle. I can't stop that from rolling around. So it might be hard to... be really hard to recycle and you can put some evidence for those uh, it could be some bits of the paper easy but then when you get foil you can't take off the foil things like that reasons against or reasons that you disagree that it should be banned it shouldn't be banned because it's enjoyable uh, and you might say it's part of the theater part of the theatre so what I mean it's 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 part of the occasion uh it's the bit that makes people happy it's the it's the ripping the noise uh it might be the anticipation it might be uh, that you take lots of time in it so you're showing people that you care because you've taken a lot of time to wrap this it might be tradition so that's your task for today plan 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 spend lots of time on this what I would I suggest that you do is you, you plan it, work through it, take your time, maybe complete some of your other work and then come back. What I would do is I would look at uh, the work that I've completed over the week and some of last week and see if any of that can help you for your plan. So print the sheet off or keep it on there, just make notes next to it. But we are going to be using this today. One another thing I would suggest doing maybe at the side if you're going to use any of those uh, openers or there's some, some conjunctions I would write them down whereas consequently was a nice one alternatively is a good one write some of these